Well, hello, Global Family. This is Heather Lockett with Lasting Conversations, and we are rolling today. In the studio, we have Wally Waiters. Hey, Wally. Hey, what's up? What's up? Wally is the conscious creator, and you're also full of a most bionic resume. You've been an executive director. Uh, you've been in TV. You are a keynote speaker and author. You work with people. You work with businesses, and you just vibe good stuff. That's what I hear, and that is true <laughs> up to this point. So let's go with Conscious Creator. Let's go ahead and do that because from that breeds everything else. And, you know, we'll get into your work with with Larry King and, and William Shatner and all these other great guys, but truly it all comes down to our conscious creation and how we are manifesting and bringing ourselves into the world and into our businesses. 100%. Yeah. So, rock and roll. Okay, rock and roll. So Conscious Creator, that came about about five or six years ago, because I realized a long time ago, I was magnetic from the time I got out of college. You know, I would just meet people serendipitously, but I was not conscious of it. I'd get million dollar deals from my father's construction company just by standing in line, paying a phone bill, magnetizing people to me. And it was fun, but I thought it was just natural. I've been, I spent my whole life this way, and I thought everyone was this way. Then I realized when I started telling people about things, they looked at me like I had three heads, and yeah. I'm like, Maybe they're not like me. And so I spent most of my journey just seeking others of like mind and like kind. So when I found that, quote, soul tribe, it was through the Essence of Being workshop with Bird, Smith, Lion. And it was the first time I felt at home. I felt heard, felt understood. And I realized I had this limiting belief in my head that no one gets me and no one understands me. So I had to change that. I shifted it. Everyone gets me. The right people in my future. The right people are headed my way. The right opportunities. So years ago, I was thinking because I was writing a book at the time and I met a lot of people and they said, come up with something. So one day, and I'm that creative guy, I get downloads. If you don't know what downloads are, I'll just give you an education of what that is. Downloads, when you, something outside of yourself gives you a message that you know didn't come from yourself. I was the vessel. And I got a download, Wally Waiters, the conscious creator. Conscious creator, because when you're unconscious, we're still creating our own reality. But I believe that if we're conscious about it, how much more that we can create for our lives. You just unpacked so much right there, including the, the whole download thing, because there's inspiration, which is very, very similar. Um, and then the download, that is exactly where it feels like it's coming from somewhere outside of us. Right. Um, it could be an actual voice. Or it could be just this overwhelming, overwhelming feeling. And that creation of artists and musicians, they get downloads all the time. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm going to throw out a question, though. Sure. What do you feel is the difference between an inspiration and a download? An inspiration is an event or occurrence in your life that gives you inspiration and motivation. For example, say I, I watch a show on TV and it's talking about something that I'm familiar with and I get a message out of that. It inspires me based upon another person or opportunity or situation that happens in my life. A download is something when you're seeking for an answer specifically. Mm -hmm. And I believe that as a biblical scripture says, ask, seek, and knock. Mm -hmm. Ask, and you will receive. Seeking, you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened unto you. So when you get to that place where you're looking for a download, you already have to be in a seeking mode to receive it, and open to receive. I tell people all the time, we get downloads all the time, but we're questioning our intuition. Is that my own subconscious mind speaking, or is that? in otherworldly, higher power, being God, spirit, etc. And then again, you just said, where are we open to hear? Are we hearing ourselves? Maybe it's someplace from within ourselves, our own hearts calling, if you will, opening right. these very doors that are knock, knock, knocking. Exactly. But I learned a lot of time, and this through a lot of workshops, a lot of practice, that you have to trust your intuition. Yes. And because I was, when you question it, it's because of your own doubt. When, and every time I move forward, an intuitive message came to me to go talk to that person or to open this door or to go this direction or that direction, it's proven to be 100% accurate. And you get to the phase where you think, okay, is that a coincidence? And I did spend my whole life, but is that a coincidence? And when you get to about 100 of those things, you mm -hmm. realize it's certainty. It's definitely not a coincidence. That's a true pattern. And so these moments that are kind of pivotal moments that, again, feel like they're beyond us, but then it when you realize and step out of that monkey mind, perhaps that you're talking about, 
the doubt, worry, is understanding, no, this is your path and that this is the easy way. So uh, before we started uh, rolling here, we were talking about how did I get into this podcast or my evolution with that. It was never on my vision board. I had no official plan. Mm -hmm. And yet the moment was that I was physically in a location and I was brought there. And then a conversation was serendipitous and synchronistic. And my business name had already been last in conversation. So it was already pre-packed. It was already built in. So it was the easiest thing to say yes and just Mm -hmm. keep saying yes. Because it felt right to you. And it felt it right. felt right to you before because you know here's without what the overthinking, yes. without the worrying. This is what happens unconsciously. Right. You walk through a door, this happens, that and things line up in the place, and that's a sign that you're moving in the right direction. Right. That's exactly true. Yeah. So tell me about um within the business sector and your keynote speaking and with your you're with a room full of suits or you're with a w- room full of um perhaps egos or old pr- programming. We're we're right. brought through schools, we're brought through education, uh business. PhDs, all those things, right. um, medical schools, which is are all fabulous, but they come from another place, the book yes. learning. You're coming from heart. You're coming from consciousness. Mm-hmm. So tell me about the, in these days, are people open to perhaps change their ways in their businesses to be more authentic within themselves first and essentially changing the whole hierarchy of how business is done. Listen, that would be fantastic if it happened. But let me just give a little backstory about how I learned to speak from the heart. Yep. I've been speaking since the age of about 14 in front of churches at national conferences. And it was my mother, Barbara, and she's with us in spirit. She told me, Wally, speak from the heart. Yeah. I said, what do you mean? Just speak. I don't script my speeches. I have three bullet points and I hit them and I speak from the heart. And intuitively, vibrations of what's coming back to me from the audience and what needs to be heard. So I really, I bless it. I pray through it. And then it comes to, I get a download message that I'm supposed to share, yep. but it sometimes changes when I'm there. So I remember I was speaking in front of a stage at the church in Miami and I was done and people were in tears and I'm like, Whoa, that's what it means. They felt my energy. So now when I get on stage, I'm usually speaking to doctors. The last time I spoke at a, one of the doctor's top docs and it was a great event, all these different doctors from all over the world. And I always start, I intuitively went to something when I was preparing for this. And it came to the point where I had to talk about the main subject. I said, this is going to be a little bit off target for you guys. But do you realize that out of this group, 25% of the people deal with depression. And you're the doc that everyone comes to, but no one, you don't want to share this with anyone. So I encouraged them about three things. Number one, being transparent. Mm Mm-hmm. Number two, being authentic. And number three, being vulnerable. When I say transparent, I mean open book. This is what's going on with me. Number two, authentic. Not being the replica of something, but being the real deal. The word authentic means that it's true. It's noble. It's right. A replica, we have watches these days. They can make a mimic of a, of a Rolex. It looks like a Rolex, feels like a Rolex, but it's not the Rolex. So I tell people, be the real deal. And the third thing is to be vulnerable. When you do it scientific minds, the last thing you want to do is express emotion. It comes from a different place. It does. It, it's it does. like they, they don't even think about emotion. Of course, right. as a man, you girl that was talking to some young men yesterday at this party I went to uh-huh. for, Thanksgiving. for Thanksgiving. And I was telling them, you know what? We're taught from a young age, boys don't, big boys don't cry. To bottle up that emotion, to quench it. But what happens when you bottle up that emotion, it creates the hormones of stress mm-hmm. raise up. Cortisol goes high. And this is why the silent killer of heart attacks and everything else, not because of health, but because of stress and unrelieved stress. So I listened to Tony Robbins to somebody many years ago, probably 20 some odd years ago. And he said, man, you got to be able to cry and show emotion. So what did Wally do once a year, once every few years? I would lock myself in a room. No one saw me. And I would just think about all the horrible crap that happened to me. And I just ball for like an hour. I dust myself up. No one saw anything. I get up and walk out. What I'm realizing now that as men, we have to be able to show emotion. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to speak from our hearts. And we have to let people know what's going on in our lives because in this post-pandemic world, guess what? There's a lot of freaking people depressed who are isolated by themselves, working remotely, and no one goes on. So I talked to these doctors about that. So I always start out. And, And I then got into how to create clear vision, elevated emotion, take inspired action, how to create your own reality. 
And so I got into this with the doctors, a great message. And they came, some of them came up to me afterwards. Thank you. That was a great message. I've never told anybody I'm seeing counseling. Other guys, I do have accountability. It was great to get the feedback from the men because some of them did have accountability. They did have people at work because they were dealing at one of the most stressful times in their lives in that turn time during the pandemic. And a lot of doctors, people know this, they're, they're taking they their own down, pills. They went down, man. They, they're, they're taking pills, yeah. man. They're taking de- antidepressants. Yep. And to me, I felt spiritually that I, that was a, that's why I let off. It may sound weird to lead off with that message, but I was intuitively guided right. to address that and to get people to lower their guard get them in the spirit and get them to open up a bit. So from that, and, and we just had one of the guests on talking about education and ultimately right. all of the people talking about education, it's about seeing the kids and allowing, because kids in, when allowed are nothing but authentic and transparent. Right. I mean, they, they're nothing but a bunch of free spirits. It's up to us as their adult stewards to yes. harness that and understand that and then shepherd them through what they need to learn and all of that, and then learn from them. So one of most of the guests, their own frustrations is when the, the different systems in place couldn't allow that, right. um, for the free spirit and the authenticity. So what was also part of that are that the adults who are trying their best are having their own horrible day, or maybe their husband just left them, or maybe their car just broke down, or their mother's dying, all these things. Life happens. Life is happening. Yes. And how to help almost train the teachers or speak to the educators to understand we can help support you in navigating your emotional day without then sideways and taking it okay. out on the kids. And so that was a whole nother subset of essentially what you're talking about is that within schools, or doctors, whoever you are, if you're having a, a crap time personally, how to navigate that to be your authentic self, but especially with the kids. It, but you can actually say, you know, I'm feeling sad today. Is anybody else feeling sad today? And having those types of conversations. Trying to identify with people. Let That's me just, right. Let me unpack what you said, because yeah. you said a lot of things you said in it. First of all, I did a series with Larry King. It was called you know, improving the quality of education in the 21st century, preparing, mm-hmm. preparing the next workforce. We work with 67 public school districts on my series. And we realize if you look back at the school system, the way they teach and chairs and desks has not has been the same since the mid-1800s. Rose, Rose yeah. since the mid-1800s has not changed at all. Yep. But there were some innovative school districts that were allowing things. They let them sit on the floor, be more creative. Because if you get the kid who can't stay in his seat, oh, he has ADD, let's put him on Ritalin. Mm-hmm or Adderall or whatever it is these days. Yep. But my point is everyone learns different. And for me, I realized that with students, the majority of the work is the responsibility of the parents in the home. I will tell you right now. Right. The emotional intelligence of kids is a part of the parent's role and responsibility. Mm-hmm. I don't believe you can reason with a two-year-old or three-year-old. Because if you think about their subconscious, what does a two-year-old always hear when they get to these, quote, terrible twos? Mm-hmm. No. Don't touch that. Don't do that. You have to reframe that. It, and my point is, but that's because that's where they're subconscious. That word no snaps them into place. Mm-hmm. I've seen grown women, when you say no, they're almost like turn into a five-year-old mm-hmm. because it's subconsciously programmed into us. Now, where do we go from here? And just, you know, my background, I did start a school. I was chairman of the board. It was called Oakstone Academy of the Palm Beach. It's still going on. I was chairman of the board for six years. And we created this school because one of my kids was in the ASD spectrum. And the public schools. One of your personal children? Yes, one of my personal children, yes. Beautiful. He's awesome now. Yeah. But I, I realized that the public schools, they just learn differently. Right. And they didn't understand them. So they put him in these pods. My, come, my son would come home with people flapping his arm, and he didn't have that habit, pick it up from other people. So we created a school, and it was based upon having three students as peers for every one student spectrum. My son became a peer within about a year went to public school, graduated, he's in college, 3.2 job and everything else. But my point is, if I would have put him into a tradi- traditional system, mm-hmm. it would have programmed, programmed him completely different. And I believe that with the traditional school system, they're teaching, their agendas in these school systems are so wound up right now. They're teaching kids things that should not be taught, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, four-year-olds. And I think it's caused more confusion, but there's a deeper agenda spiritually that's attached to that. And I can't overlook that part of it because it's being programmed. It's, it's been going on for 40 years. If you watch the degradation of how they've watered things down over the years, 
they have this thing called common core math, which doesn't make any sense to me at all because we were taught a certain way and I had to go relearn how to do simple equations using this common core, which was put in by your president Obama, not mine, but uh, not political. But anyway, I don't, I don't, so my point was, it's one of those things that if you have to look at the agenda and how they are doing kids, that's why I say the most of it's important for the parents to deal with the emotional element of the students, because right. if we don't take that role, we're putting our kids in the hand of a completely different system that is going to program them, chew them up, spit them out, and put them into this world. And what do you see happening right now with students? Depression, confusion, you know, suicide rate is going up crazily because they don't have a pit purpose, a mission, and they're confused about what this certain mentality has taught them. And I'm not attacking the public school system. I'm just making the facts out there. And the teachers out there, they almost feel like they have to bypass and go with the, lose their heart and go with the agenda right. of teaching kids to take tests, not learning. And there's the difference where yes. we want to learn and absorb everything that is rich with this world right. versus um, the rote, everything else. So again, you just um, layered so many things in what you were just saying. And this gets into purpose, passion, how how are you guiding, whether it's for more schools or the doctors and in the work that you're doing, you're, you're a specific guy yeah. and you have a method mm -hmm. um, guided and open and free, but then there's a very specific methodology, it sounds like. So right. I'd like to hear more about that. First of all, let me preface this by saying this. Yeah. There's a saying that says, when the student is ready, the master will appear. Exactly. Another one I mentioned, the fields are white for harvest out there. I can't pretend that I can break down every construct that every doctor has in their mind, heart, and spirit. That's right. With science, that's why I study science of quantum physics and quantum mechanics. Because if I'm just the woo-woo spiritual guy up on stage telling me you need to meditate and pray, they don't get that. But when I start laying out the scientific evidence yep. that points in that direction, I have their attention. I see them lean forward in their seats and they want to know more about it. There's real math to it. There is. There is real math. And before we go on that tangent, I, I will circle back one more time about the learning and the kids and, and that the teachers, but that these constructs um, were in this ev dynamic evolutionary time. And so the beauty of that is that we're seeing where right. things have gone awry and that maybe generationally, um, Many kids are thriving and the households are thriving because they can tap in and understand, oh, that we're just in a whole nother way right now. And that's right. okay. The ones that are feeling that squeeze and the unease, um, I think this is where you and I are these very conversations, these shows can help say you're not alone and there are other resources and people have your back to right. hopefully so you wouldn't feel so lost and alone. You're talking about soul family. We need to find our tribe. To yes. understand, to literally speak your language, um, mm -hmm. and your language is your vibe and the harmonics of it all. So yes. I wanted to tie all that in together with exactly what you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah. So back to the, so the doctors, when I speak to them, I, I start off with an icebreaker, or just facts, statistics that are right. there about depression, suicide amongst their profession. And that, that sort of opens them up a bit. Once I break it down, because I'm speaking to their hearts and their minds and their souls and talking true things that are happening in their lives. Which nobody really talks about. That that's a like real about thing it. about the, the depression and suicide rate within the medical and, field. And, and you know what? And overdoses on drugs like fentanyl and everything else, it's mm -hmm. happening rampant. But it's not getting the media because it's affecting the middle class white American families. It's not the, the street level people or minorities. They don't really take a lot of pills. But when you get to these pills, these people have reached this pinnacle. Their parents are wealthy, but they don't have the love that they need. Mm -hmm. They're still seeking. And there's a scripture. Always go back to scripture. For lack of vision, the people perish. If people don't have a vision for their future, they're going to perish. What happens? So the doctors, when I speak to them, it's almost like a, it's a, it's, you're putting it out there. But, you know, I told somebody this. I used to lead an intercessory prayer group, and I used to prophesy and lead people in prayer. I may get a download or message for one person out there. And when I get this, someone's interrupting my message, and I'll say there's someone out right now who's having these type of thoughts. What happens afterward, 20 people come up to me and tell me that you were speaking directly to me. So when I speak, I take an intuitive approach. I pick up the vibration, the energy, and the spirit may lead me to lock in on one doctor. And I'll say something like, you know what? You've been taking pills and writing your own scripts for years, and no one knows about it but you. 
And next thing you know, I'll, I'll unwind it. But it, again, it's about communicating connection. I've learned that when I speak, I get energy. It's called mm-hmm. synergy. I get energy from the people in the audience, and I give back that energy to the people. But I might not be focused or led to talk about 20 people. So when I do it, give an intuitive message, it's almost an offshoot. It goes off my normal pitch or presentation and focus on the individual. And that's how I believe I connect with those people. Because if they're open, and as a scripture, I'll go back again. For those who have ears, let them hear. And as it, it says that some people's hearts are so hard that they can't see with their eyes. They can't hear with their ears or they cannot understand with their hearts. But and it's talking about breaking up that hardness of heart, that callousness. It's like a, I told people, I would like my filet mignon, it's Pittsburgh style, burned on the outside, but red in the middle. And I think a lot of hearts have been scorched, which causes people to have limiting beliefs and emotional issues. But my job as a speaker is to cut right through that with a double-edged sword and open that up and let that red, juicy, genuine, authentic heart speak. But if you're in a group of people who don't feel like that, you know, it's, it's hard. So to me, I'm not trying to change the whole mindset of the entire audience, but I know whenever I show up, there's at least one person out there that's going to have the eyes that are seeing, the ears that are hearing, and have that heart that is understanding. So how do I do that? I break the message down, and I talk about things that science, of course, because I'm relatable with them. Mm -hmm. Then I'll talk about spiritual things in a scientific method. And I talk about what's your vision for the future. You're a doctor now, but some people, you realize this. I tell people, people in a certain particular field because of something that happened to them. Maybe they were motivated to become a doctor because their mom died of breast cancer. Maybe they just wanted to make money. But some people who are purposeful, they, they get into something because something has impacted their life. Mm-hmm. And they don't want to see it happen again and want to help and serve. Those are the ones that I really speak to. The other ones that want to get rich and make, I'm not mad at that. It's a good career to make money. When you get to that part, maybe the, 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 the till, the ground is being broken up in their heart. And if I can do one piece and just break up a little bit of that heart and heart, who knows the next person may come on. And maybe some serendipities might happen. Someone else will get in their path because I don't think it's my job to save the world. But when I speak, if there's one person, I always tell people that if I can impact one person's life by this, I've done my job. And in the television business, I've done that. I say that when I tell people about the shows we're doing, there was a story I did years ago with Larry King. It was on colorectal cancer. Mm-hmm. True story. And there was this woman, a producer I had working on the show, and she was one producing it, writing the script, and it caused her to go get a colorectal scan. Did you know they found this 10-centimeter polyp? And she had her move, saved her life. To me, that's what it's all about. Did I know that was going to happen? Did I know why I signed her to work on this segment? No, but I believe that. And that's my mindset with everything I do is having a positive impact. In fact, my purpose statement is how can I positively impact and transform people's lives using my gifts, talents, abilities, and my voice every day. And that's just beautiful. In some ways, it seems like that could be all of our mantras, if you will, yeah. you know, how you know, show me the way, how, how can I make, um, we do say the world a better place, but like you said, it's not from that savior aspect. No, It's, it's that vibe of, uh, sometimes it's literally, if you're going to smile at somebody or, um, yes. shake their hand or acknowledge say thank them. you and acknowledge them. I mean, acknowledge people. Just acknowledge another human to human. I got that from my father. My father said, Wally, you can learn from the the bus boy, the valet yep. guy, or the CEO of the company, everyone in between. Yep. Everyone has a purpose in life. Acknowledge and recognize people no matter where they're at. You have no idea how you're going to change their life by saying, please, thank you, giving them a good tip. Yep. And tip acknowledge well. them yep. for who they are because you don't, we don't know what's going on in people's lives. So exactly. Exactly. Well, and this fits in right now because it's the, the hubbub of holiday season, which kicks up all kinds of emotion and and memories, good or bad, and family dynamics, good or bad. And um, and I hate to even say good or bad, but it just kicks up all of our stuff. And then you're going to add all the shopping and the travel and customer service. And so if we can remember to do that very thing mm-hmm. and acknowledge that cashier who is so overwhelmed because they see the line out the door, mm-hmm. that's a very hard thing. And so thank you for letting me buy this $10 
And it could be seasonal workers and who work in a side hustle of the holidays of and make extra money. Right, exactly. and the waiters, anybody that is actually yeah. ar- arriving for their job, it's, it's really tough. Um, so in the communication field, which you are in the, we are both in the communication yes, field. And you're so true about the each one reach one, right? If there's yes. one person today, and if there's a ripple effect, that's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. I enjoy that. So you were in a long-term career within the television field. Now that field seems to have changed. And do you feel that there is still room for this authenticity or has have things kind of gone off the heezy in a bit and, and have become a little more fractured and, and robotic? And where do you sit in well, terms of these conversations? Here's where I sit in those conversations. It's or maybe you don't want to anymore. Uh, That's listen, okay. <laughs> it is. I'm still in a television business. I'm working on several projects now, right now as we speak. Good. Well, one thing I've learned is that people buy authenticity. There you go. People vibe with authenticity. And if you've noticed that a lot of the different shows out there now are showing the real deal. Mm-hmm. When people can identify with you, again, these people, these celebrities, they want to identify with other people. Right. It's not about them reading a script per se. So I believe that some of the things that are happening in the Hollywood arena, I'll call it, have definitely changed due to AI. In fact, we mm-hmm. just wrapped up the SAG strike because they wanted to replace extras with all AI. They want to read, they can, they can duplicate you right now and have you doing some crazy stuff right now. And it happened that way. So they sort of minimize that. That was the whole, what the fight is about. Right. Because technology is not intuitive. This is not energy. It's just technology. It can only replicate. But now they're starting to develop AI that has feelings and emotions and everything, but nothing will ever Never. replace the human soul. Right. So, so my thoughts are team a, human. So yeah, you're talking there, to there, them. There are people out there who, who are authentic out there. And I think right. that's what people are really looking for now. Right. You find yourself scrolling on TikTok or YouTube. You're not going to go with all these ads that are trying to sell you how you can make this money through affiliate marketing. You get to vibe with the people who are speaking truth on spirituality. The people who are speaking the truth about science, technology, evolution. The people are even what they call conspiracy theorists who are speaking truth. Because I read a quote the other day. It was like this. A conspiracy. Mom, what's a conspiracy theorist? Well, son, a conspiracy theorist is someone who's figured out everything else before everyone else knows. I've heard of that. <laughs> it is true, though, because I've had people tell me things and it happened just as they predicted. I'm not going down the rabbit hole on that. I enjoy it. But I know that as I vibe as a conscious being and an elevated soul in this existence, there's certain things that just can line up in you. You can't turn a blind and ignore them, ignore them, like the warning light flashing on your tire that you need to fill up the air in the tire. It's flashing in front of you, but if you ignore it, it's not going to change. Then you get a flat tire. Why the heck did I get a flat tire? Is that bad luck? Is my karma not lined up? No, it's not because of that. You didn't put a freaking air in the tire when you saw the warning. And this is across the board in our lives. We can come up with these hyper-spiritualized things and believe it. I don't know, having a bad day at a flat tire, but you have a light from flashing for weeks now. You had a warning come up. Was it mercury retrograde? No, (laughs) you needed air in your tire. Exactly, exactly. (laughs) I think a lot of times we... Listen, the, the community I deal with, we deal with Mercury, full moon meditations, everything yeah. else, alignment, bad energy, bad karma, good energy, good things happening. But I've adopted a phrase again, out of the scripture says, I know that everything is working out for me. All things work for my good. If I believe that all things work for my good, I have nothing to complain about. But we still do, we can get our humanity and our emotions, and we feel down, lonely, fearful, doubtful, uncertain. And these things that are part of our human nature, anybody who can tell me completely block that off 100%, there's that's, not a human spirit in them. That's not authentic. Right. And you use that word hyper-spiritualize. Uh, I yes. think that can be very well true. Or uh, the bliss band-aid, as they say. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's very, very true. So um, tell us more about what it is that you would like to be saying. Here we have this great global community. And is there something in particular that you'd like to voice, or is there a project that you're working on, or both? Well, I'm working on several projects. Some can be disclosed, some cannot be disclosed at this okay. particular point in mm-hmm. time due to NDAs and contracts. One thing I will say is this. I think it's all about vision. And I'll tell you this. You know, I speak at this Global Vision Conference here several times, twice a year. I did it for different eight, eight, eight of those conferences. And the one thing I realize is that there are a lot of people out there without a purpose or a vision for their lives because they're caught up on the now. 
what I call the microwave generation. They want instant gratification. And they don't want to put in the time or the effort to sit down and figure things out because it's a whole system that's set up. It's a system. Do some research on it. You find that this has been set up decades ago, and it's set up to strictly manipulate us, to get us a part of the system, work a job for 40 years, retire, get a pension, go on Social Security and do whatever. But now this generation that I've noticed, they're very travel a lot, they're more open-minded, but yet they're very not, they're not very grounded and focused. So I tell people a vision, well, I want to buy my mother a house. That's not a vision. That's not your purpose in life. That's something you want to do as a result of your life. So when I ask people, so what's your vision for your life? What's your, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that out. And 90% of the people I've interviewed said, one thing I want to say, tap into yourself, figure out what your purpose is, and a couple of tips on how to do that. What do people say you're good at? What do people compliment you on? Well, you excellent at art or whatever. You have to go there and look at your natural, what I call the innate gifts and talents and abilities that are in you. And every person in this planet has a purpose. They have a God-given ability that's been given to them. Well, I don't know what that is. Maybe you can make bake. Maybe you can make cookies. I don't know. But my message to the global community is to figure out what that is for yourself. If you don't know, ask people around. They may have some real serious bleep to tell you. I'm trying to keep my language clean. But, you know, but at the same time, you have to acknowledge that if people say, man, you just have a good personality. You ever meet someone who's naturally just overly grateful for people? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I believe that I get mad sometimes. I say, why you thank the guy 10 times already? Then I had to check myself. It was making me feel uncomfortable because I'm not that way. But that's a gift that that individual has. So to me, finding your purpose and a vision, the second thing is to be grateful mm -hmm. and thankful. Not just one day a week. And I have a story of my kids. We used to call, I'd drive the kid in school when they were smaller. And we had this thing we call Thankful Thursday. So why don't you talk about 10, ten things you're grateful for? And my little one, he was probably five at the time. God, I'm grateful for it. There's no a hole in the ground that we are not going to fall into the abyss. I'm grateful for the rose, the trees, the sky, and everything else. My daughter, I'm grateful for my cell phone. My oldest son, dad, it's not Thanksgiving. So we have to be, have a grateful heart every single day of the week. And there's science behind that, too, that I found out. Did you realize that by just giving thanks three or four times a day for five days, it increases your immune globulin A by 50%. If you don't know what that means, that means your immune system. Mm -hmm. So if you're always sick, start giving thanks. If you feel weak, give thanks. This is science now. It's not just some woo-woo stuff, because I was reading the scripture yesterday. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. I read through Psalm 118. And it's all in there. It's, it's packed in there, the things we need to be grateful for in this life. But if you're not being grateful and not realizing it, you know, rejoice always. Give thanks, not when I'm feeling good. Give thanks when the kids are acting up. Give thanks when there's no money in the bank. Give thanks when you're walking in uncertainty because everything's working out for you. And it will change your whole outlook on life. There's some people it comes naturally to. Others of us, we have to work at it. But fine, start with something simple. I'm grateful for the fact that I woke up this morning. Exactly. I'm grateful that there's food on the table. I am so grateful that I'm breathing and walking and living. I'm so grateful I have a job and a roof over my head. And uh, now I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an avid study and reader. And years ago, I was struggling. I was uh, living in Boca, just moved over there. I didn't have any money. Job wasn't working out. And then I read something that said, take inventory. So I got a pen and a notepad up. There's no joke. I did this really... And I took in there. I went around through every room in the house. I'm grateful for this fork, these cups that don't match, these mismatched plates, pots, and pans. I'm grateful for all the books I have, my couch, all the clothes. I went through everything in every drawer. And when I realized how blessed I truly was in walking and living in abundance, not in lack, I think that we overlook all the things that we have in life, seeking more without giving thanks and gratitude for what we have right here, right now. Again, you just unpacked it all the things and that abundance so from abundance to abundance or in abundance instead of lack that right there, which again, how we were brought up or what your come from is some people have it naturally and some have to work on it. And it, it is seemingly simple, but it's everything. And yes. because then that can then change the very metaphysical matrix of yes. the, 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 Oppression or whatever crack the, the things code of the it, matrix. It yes. cracks the code and but, to can open, open up the doors to right. your own heart 
and everything else falls into place. So I did hear somebody so beautifully say um, something to the effect of, if you woke up today, there's a million people that did not wake up this True. morning who would have given every, anything to have that bad conversation with somebody or to do a job that, you, that you're saying that you don't like. They would have given anything to have woken up today. You can give thanks for waking up today and taking right. that breath, which is, it's everything. So there's a simple exercise I can give people out there who don't necessarily do that. Right. Take inventory of your life. Right. When you wake up in the morning, you start have, up by if giving If I have a roof over my head or if even if or I don't have a roof over my head. Even if you write head, down 10 things. That's I right. Write down 10 things. The night before you get, just read them and read it over again. I'm great for A, B, C, and D. Right. Start at that practice. Gratitude leads to more gratitude. And appreciation leads to more appreciation. And as you start to walk on this path, you're going to notice that you're changing. Right. No longer walking, man, I hate my job. I hate that. And I, somebody told me one time a long time ago, if you don't like your current boss, bless your boss. It'll you become a best, better person. If you don't like that employee before you fire them, pray that they would be better and train them. Maybe it's not the right fit for their life. If you don't like your kid, you're stuck with them. Forget about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's so, a whole different yeah, That's, that's, that's a, a whole different We don't show. want to unpack that no, one right now at all. Do, so no, so okay. my point is, is that it's, you can learn it's from a them choice. Too, right? It's a choice, you guys. And I think we have to make a conscious choice. Right. Not just wait till I hit the lottery. Well, I'll be grateful if I hit the lottery. I can do A, B, C, D, and E. But you've noticed that 90% of these lottery runners go broke after three, five years. That's true. So my point is, be careful what you wish for. But if I, if, if, there's that if behind what you'd be grateful for. And here's the thing, the last thing I want to say about gratitude, you know. Since we were children, and you have children or adults now. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing we tell them? Say please and what? Thank you. Please and thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank you does what it closes out the transaction. But the funny thing is, is that we get to be on this rote routine thing because it's been subconsciously programmed into our mind from the time we're a baby. Say please and thank you. And there's no heart behind it. So we may be saying thank you to someone. And it's, it's just like our mother told you, say please and thank you. But when you say thankful, you, you say please and thank you. Think about it. Get the feel the emotion. Right. What does it feel like to be grateful? How does it feel when I say thank you? There's a certain remote, what is it, a emotion and frequency that goes with gratitude. But I found out from someone who told me yesterday, authenticity is like a thousand times better than gratitude, the vibrational frequency. Of I was just going to go there. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we're on the same page here when I can yep. tell already. I'm yep. feeling you. <laughs> so it's one of those things that, man, feel it. Right. And get still and just feel that emotion. I go, I've been going through this 10 minute meditation. It's a guy, Brian Scott. I saw it on YouTube. And busy, we're busy. I listen to it three times a day. And it's, it takes you to a place where you're thankful for things. Sort of God, and he asks you, what are you grateful for? Think of a moment in your life that you were absolutely grateful and put yourself there. How did it smell? How did it feel? How did you act? And I always go back to the birth of my children, being there for that. And I get tears in my eyes because having that person come out of the womb and being able to see that new life, it just brought me so much joy into my heart. So we have to find things that we're grateful for. And it's funny, I talk about my mother a lot because she taught me this stuff before there was a Joe Dispenza, before there was a Bruce Lipton, a Greg Braden, way back in, way back in the <laughs> probably the late 80s, early 90s. She said, you know what, Wally? You can, rec you can create your own reality. Just go back to a time. And I remember I was working in the TV business and I fell into a slump, three months. She said, go back to a time in your mind that you were successful. How did you walk? How did you talk? How did you feel? How did people approach you? When you're on top of the world, everyone's saying, what are you doing? Wow, you look different. You walked with a certain air of confidence and certainty. Right. And I think, and I still, I, I recreated that. And within days, I, I wrote the same day that I did this. I had three contracts come in. And it's not a coincidence. And my point is that frequency, the past, present, future, our mind doesn't know. Have you ever smelt a perfume that takes you back to 1985? Mm -hmm. Or the song and you have a memory that comes, you get a smile on your face like this. And like people are like, why are you smiling? Because your mind is there already. And I think if you haven't had those victories in your life, make it up in your mind. Because guess what? Past, present, future. Give gratitude. When you give gratitude for things that have not happened, guess what? It closes the transaction. The universe is listening to you. God is listening to you. And it's finished. And it's done. The problem that I struggle with, everyone struggles with uncertainty. You don't see things happening in the time frame that you choose to happen or this needs to happen now, and you would get all frustrated and aggravated, settle down. <laughs> it's so settle true. Settle down. We, oh, I do it. Every day I do Every it. I'm day. like, man, that was supposed to come in today. What's going on? But 
I have to catch myself and say, you know what? Slow down, breathe, because everything is always working out for me. The right right. people, the right places, get these affirmations. But if you're just reading affirmations of cards, it's going to do good. But what happens when you feel it? You have to feel it. What if you can visualize it and see it as done and celebrate it? And you mentioned this uh, Darcy that I met the day of Friday. So we got got on the phone on Tuesday. And it was three of us on the phone. And we're doing this whole meditation and gratitude and everything. And they said they need to move into a place. They didn't have a place yet. Did you know within 48 hours they were in that house? And that's where I went last night. That was completely manifested. because They had no idea. It happened within less than 48 hours. So So we're definitely conscious creators. That's for sure. Yes, we are. So when you were talking about gratitude, and and we caught this little vibe at the same time, because you at one point you used that word authentic. Yes. So one of the things that I've certainly learned over time is what is my authentic gratitude? Because that could look like, oh, I'm actually really fearful right now. Okay, so thank you for the fear. Who? Sh- what are you showing me in my mm-hmm. fear or sadness or the things that we want to put that little bliss Band-Aid over and right. pretend because maybe for those who have not felt anything in a really long time, and I, was, I can always feel everything, but I know a lot of people that they have so numbed out that you can be really grateful. Oh, I'm feeling something. And these sad tears are pouring out of me and not to hurry that either. Be patient with, no. be patient with these tears because they're also showing you something from your own depths. Right. So that to me yes. is also that authenticity. authenticity. That's the authenticity. I got to tell you. So I went to this uh, event yeah. at this, uh, in the woods. Kind of full called, circles it, in, it into really the is. guys in the, in the moment and the tears. It was, at, yeah. uh, it was a, this event I went to called mastery sisters workshop. It's 10 days, North Carolina woods in a freaking farmhouse study room, <laughs> 16 hour seminars. And one thing that he taught us to is to work through our pain. Don't avoid the pain. Don't avoid it. I love my pain. Love through the pain because you know what? It happened for a reason in your life. Mm-hmm. Don't try to brush it off and what you're going to call, put a bliss bandaid on it. Right. Listen, a lot of people do that. But if you feel pain and anguish, uncertainty, don't fight it. Don't resist it. Allow it to flow through. through you. Right. Allow it to flow through you because a lot of times I don't want to miss that. Oh, no, no, negative, never cancel, clear, cancel, clear. But my point is, is that if you allow yourself to process it, mm-hmm. there's victory on the other side through your pain, through your difficulties and through your sorrow. Yeah. But if you get stuck there and you're resisting it, other things will happen. And you understand that our mind that is so divinely created is a human supercomputer. Mm hmm. Everything that's ever happened, even 50% of things that never happened are in our brain. And we have the ability to recall those things and to work through those things, but not to dwell on them. Right. And I was going to say, we don't have to live in the pain because some people choose to do that too. Work through it. Work through it. And when people get stuck in pain, that's what, we, what I call the victim mentality. Well, that's right. I blame you, 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 and you. This is all your fault. Right. This is my dad's fault. It's my mom's fault. And it's fault. all going to suck anyway. Fault. So it might as well just suck and my sucky yeah. suck suck life. Right. Exactly. And then you can take people down with you. So you and I are saying, yeah, no, we don't need to do that anymore. No, we don't have to. Right. And, listen, and we don't need to be with people like okay. that either. It's okay. If you're not perfect, guess what? It's okay if it's you right. screw up every now and then, you know? Of course. It's okay if you screw up because when you get that contrast of what you don't want, mm-hmm. you're very clear of what you do want. Contrast creates that clarity, that clear path and vision for you. So I'm not I'm not one of those persons that shiko, kum, let's sing kumbaya and sit around. I'm real. Mm-hmm. And we're in this human existence right now right. where there is pain, there is suffering, there are struggles. My point is, you need to become victorious and a victim less mentality. Don't let the victim put a strike on you. So many people, I always tell people, I'm like, I always track, I attract people who are struggling with things, who are stuck in things. And I, I, I realize I can't get them and save them out of, I use a different saying, I tell guys, but I can't be the one to get you out of your, your muck and your mire. Mm-hmm. You have to have the will to climb out. Right. And stop blaming other people. But you don't understand this happened to me and this said that to me and this happened right. to me as a cut child. I get it. And the system. I'm not ignoring and, that. That's right. I'm not ignoring that. I feel your pain. But is that is that where your choice is to remain in that? Right. Or do you want to rise above it? As or they step say. step out. You can step out of it. Right. There's right. a thing that says bleep happens. Yep. It does happen. Yep. Guess what? But get out of it. But I've learned through other things, through language and words that we say. I took a, read a book called Conscious Language. And it was like powerful because the words we say create. Mm-hmm. our reality and they'd be conscious of that 
And it's not easy to do. It's work. And sometimes we don't want to work. Sometimes we just want to be and everything else and just wallow in the mire, feel sad for a reason, put our bliss band-aids on or other kind of band-aids through pharmaceuticals, through spirits, through whatever it is. And it's just a season, but you will get out of that. You will, if this too shall pass. This too shall pass. But we don't want to believe that. I don't want to, I'm like, I don't want to go through this. What do you mean I have to walk through this valley here and through this dark stage of my life and this uncertainty? Right. And I'm preaching to myself right now because I know I've walked through those times. And some things have changed. Other things are still changing. Life is a journey. It's not like I'm going to Cabo and then coming back. It's a journey. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey. And I believe that that's how I choose to live my life. And I do, do I make bad choices? Some 100% absolutely in my humanity. Do I make a lot better choices? Yes, I do. But we know we're stepping out of that realm and we're ste- stepping onto the wrong path. Being conscious. I get worried if I was in the place where I didn't see it. There you go. That's the unconscious part yes. when we don't see it. And, or like you're saying with the flashing yellow light, what, yes. are, we, what are we missing here? What are, what are some other opportunities? Lights are flashing every day, baby. <laughs> Lights are flashing <laughs> they every, are, day. every day. Every day. It's every so day. true. It's so true. So, Wally, where can people reach out to find you? And again, I know you've got some other projects. You're not exactly talking about them right. yet, but you're you're available. You're working on some amazing things. You have a voice in this world. So, how would you yes. like people to? The magnet that you are will go shoot well, right over. Well, right now I'm redoing my website, okay. so that's going to be up soon. Yep. And I had to rebrand. It was done like 10 years ago, and the technology has changed. Yes. So I'm rebranding that. And primarily where you can find me, believe it or not, Facebook at Wally Waiters. That's W-A-L-I-W-A-I-T-E-R-S, or better yet, Instagram. Mm-hmm. Instagram is sim- simply Wally Waiters underscore, actually, I don't have the underscores in there, underscore conscious creator. So it's W-A-L-I. W-A-I-T-E-R-S underscore conscious creator. And you can find, see some of my videos and things. You can respond to me. I'll get back to you. And I'll give you updates when my new book is coming out called Transformational Truths. I've been working on it for a year now, year and a half. And I and bet just, you it's all yeah. downloaded, inspired. Oh, it's inspired. Lessons learned. It's a lot it's of lessons. Completely. It's a series yeah. of thoughts, principles, and experiences created to guide you through life's journey based on my own personal experience of being a different place in my transformational journey over the past five years. Beautiful. And I should have finished it last year, but you know what? It's mostly done now. I just have to sit down and put the finishing touches on it and get it published. So I would say best way to get me is on those platforms, Mm -hmm. Facebook or Instagram right now. And we'll have all of that on, um, on the little uh, write up codes, you know, info that we put on each show. So that's really fantastic. And it'll be on my Facebook page as well. Um, That book sounds very exciting. Yes. And of course, there's no should, right? Because we don't want to should all over ourselves. Exactly. (laughs) We don't want to should all over ourselves because that's the divine path. It really is. Don't should on yourself. Birds used to always say that all the time. (laughs) Birds smith lion from essence of being. Yes. And my point is, it's a journey. We'll say certain things, but when you see, hear those words, it triggers something. Yep. And I've had uh, people tell me, don't use that. That's a low frequency word. I'm like, thanks for pointing it out to me. It's a low vibrational energy word. Why would you say that? And it's like, it's not, it's done out of love. And to me, I'm open to receive from other people. Another thing I've learned. So I'm telling you, if anyone out there is resonating with what I'm telling you right now, maybe you're in a position in your life that you don't think things are working out for you. Maybe you are that person who's curled up in a fetal position in your place right now with CNN running all day long. What I want to tell you, it's your choice to get up and to stand up and to ask for help. The last thing anyone wants to hear is that, you know, I think that I could have been a person who impacted their life, but I just never knew what's going on with them. So find, and this is something I got to download the other about community. Yep. We're spread apart. We're on Zoom. I'm on Zoom calls and phone calls all day long, working remotely. But my point is we need to have that human connectivity. Yep. We were not meant to be separated like this. And what this pandemic caused with us is that separation which breaks down humanity, causes loneliness and more depression than ever before. So if you are that person, reach out to us. Comment but comment on this video right here. Let Heather help you. She's a very awakened person in consciousness. Let someone know what's going on in your life. And I don't know if I'm speaking to one specific person or dozens of people. 
wherever you are, my challenge to you is to get up, turn off CNN, reach out, make a comment, and ask for help from someone because no one knows what's going on in your life right now. Right. You're the only one, really. Yes. And and But there are a lot of helpers. And I'm, again, as team human, sometimes you got to just turn off all of the stations and understand the station that is you and your own heart mm. and understand that. Absolutely. And some birds and some trees and nature and maybe yes. a crystal or two because – I know for me personally, from my own experience, yeah. the days that I'm not listening to anybody else's voice and less words can really clear the mind yeah. and clear the space and, and get into auras, whatever, but just to, to tap into your own. So whatever radio station or TV station, it doesn't even matter um, because you'll find your own station, yes. the station of you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wally Waiters, thanks so much for sharing your time with us and your vision and your voice. Thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it greatly. Thank you very much. And thanks, everybody, for listening. Please like, review, and share this podcast. And if you want to be part of the show, please write us at podcast at lastingconversations.com. And you can find us on Facebook and now Instagram and now on YouTube at Lasting Conversations. So we are Lasting Conversations. We get to the heart of everything. <laughs>